Hello, I'm Pranago, and this video is going to teach you everything you need to know to get an insane or difficult or whatever AI, pre-built AI, created by Blizzard, up and running in your own mission. Uh, this video is recorded as a response to some questions a forum poster over at the battle.net uh, forums is having. He's having some difficulty figuring out exactly how to set up a Protoss base with an expansion and run the area town script and run the insane or difficult or whatever script. And the reason why I'm recording this video is because it's really impossible for me to explain this stuff through text. There's so many little things that could go wrong that could be causing the issues that he's reporting and that could be causing issues that a lot of other people experience when they experiment with campaign style missions and they want to try to use certain area, uh, you know, certain scripts or whatever, be it area town, be it anything else. And that's uh, that's the reason why I'm recording this video. So let's get right into it. As you can see, I've opened up Astral Balance, the 1v1 map created by Blizzard, one of many. I'm just going to show you this as an example because it's really easy to take a melee mission or any mission that you've created in your own time with the editor and get this AI stuff up and running. It's also easy, however, to screw something up in the process, which is uh, hopefully while you're watching this video, you can learn how not to screw it up. So uh, first things first, we need a base for our AI. Now, when we set up our base, it's important to understand what the AI scripts that we're going to be running uh, actually call for. So for example, the uh, script that most people really like to do, uh, really like to run is the insane script or the, the campaign difficulty script. So it could be uh, Terran campaign difficult, Protoss campaign insane, Zerg campaign medium. Uh, but doesn't matter what difficulty it is, easy, medium, hard, or uh, insane or easy, medium, difficult, or insane, they all use every single unit available to them. And this is why if you're trying to say, uh, like this battle net poster is, uh, make a Protoss faction that doesn't use Nerezim units, they're a Kali faction, then you're going to want to use the expand, or uh, not the expansion script. So you'd want to use, uh, pro you know, Protoss campaign difficult instead of expansion Protoss campaign difficult. And I'll show you what those look like in here. I'm using SEM draft. You can do this with star edit as well. So, uh, for example, if player two is our AI, we can set the condition to always. We can come over here, run AI script at location, and you got a lot more than you'd think in SEM draft than what they give you in Star Edit. But taking a look at where is it? So this is these are the expansion scripts. You don't want to be using these. You want if you're trying to do a, a Kali or just classic, not Brood War script for whatever purpose. Then you uh, roll down to. Protoss campaign, and then whatever the difficulties are. Uh, as a side note, I highly recommend you open up the scripts themselves in one of the many modding tools, such as uh, Pi AI, part of the Python modding suite. I'll throw a link to that in the description. Uh, you don't have to actually edit them or change anything about them, but just opening them and reading them, figuring out what they call for. It's very, very easy to read. It's not some weird arcane language. It really just literally says, build one Protoss Nexus, build four Protoss Probe. It, it just has a list of buildings. They're not always organized in the best way. So you can use the find feature, you control F it, or copy the whole thing and paste it into a, a better text editor like Notepad++ or whatever, and figure that out yourself. But uh, it's very, very simple to read this stuff and, and figure out what the AI is actually calling for. And this will help you uh, design your bases better so that you can design, you can place exactly what it's going to call for in its script so it doesn't have to waste time building uh, or whatever the case may be, whatever you want it to, uh, to, to use. Um, the other thing is that since you're using Protoss campaign, whatever the difficulty is, you have to enable all units or the AI hangs up. If you disable a unit or a technology or an upgrade or a structure or whatever in the map setting, say, uh, say for example, I want my Protoss AI to uh, use only, you know, I, I don't want him to use uh, Arbiters. Well, if I'm running a script and I have Arbiters disabled like this or... Again, player two is our our Arbiter player, or our, our AI player. So if I set this to disabled for player two, and player two gets to the part of the script that tells him to build Arbiters, and Arbiter Tribunals, if you disable that as well, uh, the, the script will just stop functioning. It will hang up, because it has a request that it cannot satisfy because it's being blocked by the map settings. This is a really big problem that a lot of people run into, and they don't understand why it's happening, uh, because they don't know what the AI scripts actually are. They probably view them as some arcane, you know, technology that they can't possibly interface with, when in reality, it's an incredibly simple, uh, non, uh, you know, I, I don't even know how you'd, 
how you would look at it and think it's very complicated. It's not. You can do complicated things with it, but just reading it is pretty simple anyways. So I strongly recommend that you open up Pi AI. I'll do it uh, here for you guys and, and show you how simple that process actually looks like if you're unfamiliar. Just find my folder with it. And uh, I'm just going to run this program. It takes a second to open because I'm encoding. And pop this open. And look at this. Now we can scroll down and find... Uh, where is it? Protoss campaign medium. And voila! You can see that the initial block calls for this these structures. So if we place all of these structures, then you know they'll uh, try to get these upgrades. They'll try to uh, they'll use these units for defense. They'll attack add with these units. Uh, you know, attack with those units. Then uh, after the first couple of attacks, they'll call for a stargate, a robotic support bay, an observatory. They'll get more upgrades. They will get even more units added to their defense threads and so on and so forth, and it just keeps going down until it ends up with a looping set of attacks. And these, this attack here, this block, is just attacks, and it loops back and forth infinitely, and uh, this is what you'll see for the rest of the game when it comes to it attacking. So just looking at this, we instantly have more information than, uh, than what we had before. So now we know that when we are... Uh, okay, sorry, I, was, I forgot I had that other map open. When we are making a map... Let's move this over to the second player. We know that it's going to ask for a nexus. It's going to ask for... Uh, I don't think there's any calls for pylons, so we'll just place them in ways that are nice to look at. It's going to call for a gateway. It's going to call for a cybernetics core and uh, a forge and a robotics facility. I think that was it for the initial the initial set. Let's see. Uh, cybernetics core, forge... Yep, yeah, exactly. Then we can scroll down. We'll find what it calls for next. Stargate, robotics, support band, observatory. So now we can do... I mean, you can make the AI build this stuff. As long as it's not disabled, it will build this stuff. But if you want to to build it in a set it up in a certain way where its base isn't uh, set up in a uh, you know a, a way that doesn't look good to you and what was the other one was it observatory uh yes it was okay so now we'll do that and uh yeah if you want to set it up so that the the base is set up in such a fashion where it's ready to go and doesn't have to wait for those structures to be built to continue its threads although i don't think there's a wait build command so it won't even do that it'll just it'll just call for those requests and if they're already there, it won't build additional ones unless you have another script running. Um, you know, that would be that would be the case. You know, and, and we also know that it calls for a certain number of probes at the beginning, which is six. So if we just pre-place that number of probes, it will just mine. Ta-da. It'll build the assimilator automatically. We could pre-place that as well. And voila. Now we have a base that's ready. You know, it, it'll still build some more stuff, I believe. There's, like, another block where it starts to build. Yeah, it gets a fleet beacon. So, actually, this script doesn't look like it uh, It doesn't look like it uses arbiters. So, uh, it uses almost everything else, though. So, for that purpose, we'll just add the fleet beacon somewhere. Right there is fine. And, uh, sure, we'll slap in a couple of photon cannons for good measure. And uh, very quick and dirty. I'm not really paying any attention to what this looks like. And then we just create a location around the, the hub or the start location. Or, actually, I'm, I'm a little bit dubious as to whether or not this even means anything because there's a Blizzard mission. Um, forget what the exact mission title is, but it's the Zerg mission in the classic uh, campaign. So the second campaign of the entire game. And it's when you're controlling Kerrigan and you have to kill Dark Templar. Uh, eye for an eye or something. I don't know. I don't even really remember the title. But the uh, reason why it's noteworthy is because the location that this uh, script is, their one of their campaign scripts is run over, is actually run over like a pylon, or it's not even run over a structure, and it still works. It, it seems like it functions without uh, too many problems, besides the fact that it's really easy. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that, uh, or whether or not it's actually uh, completely unnecessary to run this over a structure. But I've always run them over structures, and I've never run into issues as a result of doing that. So that's what I would recommend to you. So we'll just make this AI, and ta-da, we have your, we have everything we need here. So now we can go ahead and go to player two. And uh, always is the condition run AI script. Make sure you're doing it at location and not just anywhere. Um, and this is where we do Protoss, if we can type correctly, campaign, medium. And uh, you always want to make sure that your AI has like over 5,000 resources, I think. It might be lower than that, but uh, I always give them like uh, 100,000 or something like that. Uh, so we can do set resources, add, almost 100,000 of both resource, and there you go. Now you've got a fully functional AI trigger. Now what if we want an expansion? 
Um, well, that's not that's not what I was looking for, man. There we go. Uh, doo -doo -doo. All right, so now we're gonna get an expansion. Well, the expansion scripts are called area towns. So Protoss campaign area town just calls for a nexus. Uh, and six probes. One probe means it'll tr build one probe at a higher priority, and then six probes means it'll build up to. So this is always a maximum value. It's not additive. So when you do build one, build six, it's not going to build seven. It's going to build six. So this means we always take the highest number in build. Uh, so for example, if we saw in the medium script, uh, build one Stargate, and then further down it was uh, build two Stargate, that wouldn't mean it would build three. It means it would build two. So now that we know that there's up to six probes at this expansion as well, we can go ahead and set that up, and that's all that it—that's all that it calls for. But you can uh, you can assign stuff to this town as well. Like, uh, say we want to build a couple pylons and make sure that it, de it has defenses. These won't be rebuilt because there's no calls in the script for this. Um, but you can make this belong to the area town as opposed to the main town. Usually, only comes into effect if uh, you're actually doing something. But with uh, custom scripts, though. Some campaign scripts are area towns, so those would require, like, I think there's an area town for a Zerg script that requires a spire or something like that, so, like, calls for it, so you'd want to build that there. Um, but now we've we've satisfied all of the requests for the buildings anyways, you know, the units, whatever, it'll train those. Um, but now we can go in to our trigger and uh, run AI script at location again, protest campaign area town at AI2, make sure it's below the first script trigger, because uh, the reason why you want this to be below is that this assigns uh, the, the main town script, for example, the, uh, in this case, what we're running at this location here, uh, anytime you have a script that begins with, let's go all the way up, uh, start town, when that happens, you are telling the AI to one of the functions of start town is basically it uh, takes every structure on the field and assigns it to the location that this was run at. So that's the town center. In this case, uh, the town center is right here, the uh, AI location. Um, so if we ran a the uh, area town script at AI2 first, and then we ran this script, this would assign all of this stuff to this base. And again, this area town script calls for a nexus and six probes. Well, the probes wouldn't necessarily be assigned, or they, I guess they may, maybe they would be. But the uh, this script would, would build a, a third nexus, because uh, there's two already pre-placed. It would build an extra one, because now this nexus is assigned to this town. So you want to make sure that you're running them in the right order. Um, so that, that would uh, redefine the, the towns. Whereas in the current order, the main town script is run first, everything gets assigned to the main town, then the area town script runs and just assigns the stuff that's in this location. Uh, so that's the, the gimmick of area towns. Is the reason why the main town doesn't have to be run over everything is that it's creating the town center, which typically is the town hall, the nexus, the command center, the hatchery, whatever. And then you have the area towns that assign only what the the buildings that are in the regions, like if you uh, open a Pathfinder regions in SCM draft, you can't see this and start it. But uh, we see that this region here um, let me select terrain so you can see that better. Uh, this region here, oops, that's not my one. Um, this one here, this one here, this one, that one, that one, and that one. These all have buildings inside them. So all of these regions are now assigned to this town, and they will d attempt to defend those regions, as far as I, my understanding goes for it. But the uh, those those minor points are a little bit less important. What you need to know for sure is that that is important. You need to make sure that you are uh, setting up the, um, setting yourself up for success with regards to the uh, the locations and the order in which you are running the scripts. So now we've got our stuff. We, you know, we haven't uh, gone into unit settings and disabled anything, and we found out exactly what the AI wants. The AI doesn't want arbiters. It doesn't get arbiters. So other than that, we can have it use the entire tech tree. Carriers, um, Reavers, Shuttles, Observers, Zealot's Dragoons, High Templar, Archons. At least I believe it uses Archons. I haven't uh, actually verified that. You notice that uh, this is what I was talking about earlier. This uses Start Area Town, which is why it's considered an Area Town script, not just because the name is Area Town, whereas this one uses Start Town. Um, but let's uh, let's detect Archon. Yeah, it doesn't use Archons, but does it use? It doesn't actually have call for a High uh, High Templar either. It doesn't call for a Templar Archive. So this 
Uh, this script doesn't actually uh, use those either. So it'll just use Zealous Dragoons and then all of the air units besides Arbiters and all of the robotics facility units. So now we've ascertained that fact, we can uh, actually just place a, say uh, we'll, we'll grab a command center here, place that for player one, um, four SCVs like normal, and set the owner of player two to computer. Uh, make sure you set their races, so that user select means that they will um, they'll do some funky stuff. I'm just going to untick randomize start location. Oh, shit. I'm going to untick it again. And then we'll uh, save this map as... Where am I going to save this map? I don't know. We'll just save it as A. doesn't matter. No. It's not Blizzard certified. I promise. And then uh, I'm just going to quickly mute my sound mixer so you don't get an echo. And ba -ba -ba -ba. where is StarCraft? Sorry, I'm doing this all on the fly. No editing. Here we are, Brood War. We're just going to play it like normal. Under normal circumstances, maybe I would use the debug command. This is 116.1, but it works fine on remastered as well. Find A.SEM. We're Terran, as you can see. We have a starting base. We'll black sheep wall. We've sped the game up. And the AI is mining from this. They're upgrading. They're mining from this, you know. And, uh, you know, they, they're not building a second uh, nexus at their main or down here because we've gotten everything set up properly so this is this is how it works you know this would work if i were able to speed the game up faster you would be able to see uh, i guess i could operation cwal and uh they're gonna start preparing an attack is it three dragoons i thought it was three zealots i don't know what they're doing right now but they might be uh, just setting up defensive stuff or this might be uh an attack but i'm pretty sure they're just yeah they're they're garrisoning the area town with defensive units and stuff. They're figuring out what they want to use for defense. They've got one zealot, one measly zealot. So, uh, you know, the AI will do its thing for a while. We can sit here and watch it or not because the video has probably already gone on too long. But if, if I were to able to speed up the game, which I would be able to if I was running the debug command, you can see it's already built observers, it's already built shuttles. You know, it, it's, it's having a ball and it's uh, functioning as can be expected from Blizzard scripts. So now you know how to do the basics. You can do this in your own map as long as the, uh, you know, resources are arranged in a reasonable manner. Um, you know, just nothing more or less unreasonable than the resources in the base campaign or in any melee map. You should have no problems at all getting the AI to mine, getting the AI to not do silly stuff like build a second nexus in its main. Um, yeah, overall, I think uh, everything has, you know, it looks like it's, it's going well. There's just a, a pretty long wait before the first attack. So, uh, you know, if we were actually playing just competently... And uh, instead of observing it, we probably would be able to survive and beat this AI, even though it has all of this pre-placed junk. So there you have it. That's how you do what uh, everybody has wanted to do for years, is get functional AI. And for some reason, most people don't, uh, I guess they just don't know what's going on. So now you know what's going on. You can be better than them. You can make some cool campaign maps. You can experiment with other AI scripts, you know, AI scripts that don't involve protest campaign insane, Terran campaign insane. You know, you can you can make AI that are way more interesting just by combining existing AI scripts. You can even mod and make your own AI and have some fun that way. And that way it's even more unique and more uh, very uh, much catered to your specific project. And here we can see we have some zealots preparing to attack us. So before we get uh, destroyed by the executor, we will uh, c conclude the video. Hope you learned something new. Hope it uh, helps you out, and I will see you guys on the, the next video if you choose to stick around. I, I don't know when my next tutorial type video will be. It's uh, pretty sort of ad hoc when I, I decide to make this stuff. So yeah, hope it was helpful.